morning everyone welcome to Tuesday tea time I have Mirna right behind me and Cleo right behind her and today I wanted to talk a bit about companionship I think horses crave companions and these two mares, they came home with me in the horse trailer from the Bureau of Land Management. And they were both four years old. They're from different herd areas, so they were not raised together. Um, they made friends for the very first time in the horse trailer. And they have been almost inseparable ever since. So these two, I sometimes refer to them as my bookends because they're so similar. They look like two bookends on a bookshelf. And they're good companions. I agree, George. When you get horses from the wilds, if you can get them as a pair, it's really helpful. They adjust to being in a new environment so much better if they can come with a friend. So, you know, if I had a choice, I would always get two at a time. Um, it's not always been the way it's worked out for me, but it is my favorite way. And I just find no matter how many other friends these two have, they're always really, really happy to see each other. And as you see, they share hay really well. One of my students wrote in and they asked me to talk about horses who seem to actually appreciate higher stress levels. Horses that seem to appreciate, it's almost as though higher stress lowers their stress. And this is something that, um, you know, I don't talk about a whole lot because the fact is, higher stress in horses can be quite dangerous for the human beings working with them. If we are working with horses at a high stress level, it takes a lot more skill to stay safe. Okay, so these two, you can see they were just alerted by something. They have habits. <laughs> Breeze is alerted as well. <laughs> I think my daughter just got back from a ride on her horse, so we have a little bit more activity at the place. But higher stress levels make them pay attention. Okay, so we saw a thinking response from the mares. Okay, we saw a fight response from the little dog as he started barking. But the think response is where the eyes change position, the ears change position. They're processing the information they're getting. And that think response is a low stress response. Okay, so when things happen in the environment and horses are willing to offer a low stress response, it's a lot safer for us as people. Okay, but not all horses have patterns of low stress responses. Some horses have patterns where they prefer a high stress response, like a flight reaction, where they spook or they startle or they bolt a couple of steps. And horses who do that sometimes actually feel quite good after they spook or startle or bolt. And that's an interesting development in the brain. If they feel like running a couple of steps very fast is the response to something new that will end up making them feel better, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just less safe for us humans who don't run very fast. And what I wanted to talk about was companionship, okay? You see these two, they're in harmony with each other. Often, you know, they're gonna both look at the noise together. They're gonna have a thinking response to the noise and then they're gonna both go back to the hay together. That's companionship. They agree on what they want to do next. Now you can have two horses that agree when a noise happens, you should run, 
okay? And that running in response to a noise, there's nothing inherently wrong or bad about it. It is a flight response if your friends don't like you afterwards. It's a yield response if your friends all still like you afterwards. Okay, so what's the difference between yield and flight? And the difference is just if you have a companion or not. So these two agree on what their responses to things are. They're in harmony about their responses, which puts their responses in the thinking, yielding, playing category. They still like each other after they respond to a situation. Um, hi, Hannah. Thank you for joining us for tea. Um, and thank you all of you guys for joining us for tea. When we think about companionship, companionship is how much you still like your friend <laughs> after you respond to situations. So if, you know, leaping and bucking and kicking and biting each other is the response to a little bit of wind, okay, if it gets windy and the day gets a little crazy and you have a bunch of juvenile male horses that like play fighting and that wind is going to make them respond. If they all agree that you should bite and kick and um, throw yourself into each other and hit each other, that's a game. That's play. It's not fight until someone doesn't like it. So companionship is all about agreeing what that looks like. Now, when I train without tools, I really encourage patterns and habits of low stress responses because I'm not very big, I'm not very strong, I don't have treats to or food rewards to motivate horses to do specific behaviors, and I don't have ropes or tools to manage emotions when they get too big for my comfort. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Some horses really like it when there's a big response to the environment. They want to run a little bit, they want to play a little bit, they want to be big. That works if your friends want to be big with you and there's a companionship part of it. It's the companionship part of it that lowers stress. When there's not a companionship part of it, what happens is horses often scare themselves. So that means that an event happens, a loud noise happens, or something happens in the environment and the horses will run. They'll get a shot of adrenaline through their body and nobody's running with them. Nobody wants to do that with them. They don't have a friend or companion and it gets very uncomfortable to feel that shot of adrenaline, that energy and no friends. And that's when horses scare themselves. When they scare themselves, unfortunately, their stress becomes dysfunctional. The more dysfunctional a horse's stress is, the more likely they are to behave in ways that makes their friends not like them anymore. And so the whole difference between functional and dysfunctional is if your friends still like you after you respond to the environment you're in. Yes, to answer that student that wrote to me about horses that really actually appreciate higher stress situations, absolutely. Some horses love a high stress level, but the fact is they're not gonna love a high stress level unless they have a companion to do it with, okay? What I have found is that horses who don't have a friend to respond to the world with actually get very overwhelmed by the fight and flight feelings that they get. When they get that charge of chemicals through their brain, if they don't have anyone to do it with, they get very frightened, very worried, very scared, they become dysfunctional, and their behaviors start to be things that their friends don't like. So what do we do about that? 
Um, hi Florentine, I'm glad you're here. Welcome to tea time. I have lines that I draw of things that are okay for me and things that are not okay for me. And an example of that is for me, as a person, it is never okay for me to see the bottom of a horse's hind feet kicking toward me. And I don't care how far away they are. They could be a mile away from me. And if horses kick in my direction, that never feels okay to me. And I need to be very clear in how I respond to that, okay? So that means that when horses do things that are not okay for me, I need to make sure I do not offer them companionship, okay? I do not make it look like I am still their friend. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can certainly act with fight and aggression and I could chase them off. It's not my first choice, but it's an option. It would make it clear I'm not your friend when you behave that way. Um, I could act in flight, as in I could leave, but sometimes that's problematic because when I leave, if they feel a lot better, you've reinforced a set of behavior that, you know, they still have their horse friends, they still have companionship, they just did an action you didn't like and then they felt better afterwards and everything's good. So you have to be a little careful with the flight response. The response I really like is the, um, the thinking response along with yielding, okay? And I know this sounds really strange, but if a horse kicks at me, I want to think about all the places I could go where I am different from the horse. So I'm going to walk around their paddock on the outside of the fence if I need to be safe, on the inside of the fence if it's safe enough, and I'm just going to keep walking. I'm going to keep walking and keep walking and keep walking and I am not going to stop moving until the horse starts to behave in ways that I appreciate. Okay, so you saw Myrna picked her head up to look out in the woods and then Cleo joined her. Okay, Myrna made a decision. Cleo said yes to that decision by joining her. Now Cleo's made a decision to go back to the hay and Myrna said yes to it to go back to the hay with her. Okay. Saying yes is about being a companion, showing the horse that you are like them. So if a horse ever does something that is uncomfortable for me, I have to show the horse that it is uncomfortable for me by not being their companion, okay? But looking for the next opportunity when a horse does something that is okay with me and being their companion. So it's a little food for thought. You know, some people love high energy stuff. Um, you know, if you really like that high energy that your horse has, you're gonna find a way to match, mirror, be like them. Be a companion in that higher energy. If you're still friends after that response to the environment, it's not fight or flight. It's play or yield, okay? Um, it has to be in the play or yield category in order to be supportive of the nervous system, in order to help the horses feel good. And that's really all about companionship. So that's my thoughts for today. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, Myrna says hello. Cleo says hello. These are my bookend horses. They are about as well matched as any two you will ever meet. Luckily for me, they like it when I join too. And uh, Breezy's here, sleeping in the hay. Hi Breezy. And we're having a little party. So think about that as you watch your herds, as you watch yourself with your horses, think about companionship, okay? If your responses to the environment our responses that your friends still like you with afterwards, that's going to be a stress lowering response, even if it's very high energy. If your friends want to do it with you, that's great. Okay. If your friends don't want to do it with you, you've got to tone it down a little bit. Okay. And the horses are always learning. What do these friends actually want to do with me? They 
crave companionship. And they're constantly trying to figure out how do I respond to the environment so I still have friends. So awesome, George. Go melt in the heat with Arya and Sansa and be their companions. You guys can all melt together in the heat. Um, we're sending you some of our cool northwest weather up here. It's pretty lovely out today. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day and think about being companions. That's what horses crave.